Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Evangelist Alain. Thank you. Thank you for giving us something to talk about. Thank you for giving us something to talk about. Thank you, Father. I'd like to entitle my service today, What Next? <laughs> and it's been What Next? But this time, it's What Next? Marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Everybody say, What Next? Marvelously help. Say it again. Okay, everybody stand up on your feet. We're in the classroom, right? Everybody, no exception, unless if your legs are not working. And I want you to look at the bottom, okay? Leave the what next. I want you to pronounce very well the bottom with all your heart, speaking to your heart. Amen? One, two, three. One more time. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I am marvelously helped. I am marvelously helped. Hallelujah. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Second Chronicle chapter 26, verse 14 to 15. Moreover, Uzziah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, body armors, bows, and sling stones. In Jerusalem, he made engines of war, invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners for the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. Hence, his fame spread afar, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. Uzziah was a great king. Uzziah was a brilliant king. Uzziah was a man with great innovation. He created the first ICBM. ICBM is Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Uzziah created that. Not the Americans. In his days, by inspiration, by skillful men, he created engines that were able to project stones, not just arrows, to cross over a long field and hit the targets that ICBMs. This man was so powerful in warfare that he was spoken about across the whole globe. But he made mistakes. He despised the priest of God. And he died a leper. If God can marvelously help somebody, like King Uzziah, until he was strong, in your seat right now is one who is greater than Uzziah. I'm talking about you. You are sitting, you. You are greater than Uzziah. So if God can marvelously help Uzziah until he becomes strong, how much more God will marvelously help you? I come to give you a declaration of what God speak to me. He said, there are certain things my people want to achieve, and by their own strength, they cannot achieve it. So I'm coming to put an external force so they can be marvelously helped until they will become strong. God said, I have started helping you. I begin it, but until you become strong, I will not stop helping you. I have started the help, but I'm going to finish the help. Until it's fulfilled, until it's accomplished, I will marvelously help you. What am I talking to? God said you will marvelously help somebody. Until. I said, Lord, you have helped me in so many ways. Please don't remove your hand of help. I still need you to continue helping me. 
You started pushing me forward. Lord, please, don't remove your hand. I haven't grabbed the momentum that will make me not need you. No matter how momentum I'm moving with, I still need the hand of God to keep helping me until I finish the race, until I achieve what he has called me to. We need God to marvelously help us in this season. Is there anybody who has something you know you need the hand of God to help you? I say, God, don't just help me. I want you to marvelously help me. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me. Marvelously. marvelously. You know what it means? It means God is about to help you in such a way people will marvel. Marango te kalamanda. People will marvel because they will wonder, how did this man end up achieving such? We didn't see it coming. They will marvel. That's what God does. When the marvelous God gives you marvelous help, people begin to marvel because of the marvelous things God will achieve in your life. Somebody say, I am for a sign and a wonder. Somebody need to marvel of your life. Somebody to marvel at your project. Somebody need to marvel at your ministry. Somebody need to marvel everything you thought they're going to marvel because nobody see it coming, but yet it just happened. May the Lord keep helping you. May the Lord keep helping you. I kneel down and I say, Father, please don't stop helping me. I'm not good enough. I still need you until I become strong. And when I'm strong, I still need you to keep helping me. Oh, I need the help of the Lord. Where does your help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and the earth. You will not have made it here if it was not for the help of the Lord. You will not have achieved what you achieved if it was not for the help of the Lord. You could have not stand where you stand if it was not for the land of the Lord. Lord, help me. Help me in my family. Help me in my marriage. Help me in my finances. Help me in the church. Help me in the ministry. Help me with my children. Help me, oh God Almighty, with the territory you have given to me. I need your help. I want you to marvelously help me. By strength shall no man prevail. But the help of the Lord is the security of your success. No man can succeed without God. And I say, Lord, marvelously help me. What next for you, heaven? It is to marvelously help me. What next for you, God, in my life is to marvelously help me. Is to marvelously remember me. I need the marvel of God. I need the marvelous help of God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who need the marvelous help of God? Somebody, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 146, verse 5. I want to talk about the marvelous God who helped the God of Jacob. 146.5 and 146.7. How blessed he is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord is God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Sila. In other words, pause Think about it. The God of Jacob is my helper. I would like to speak to you through the line. My next slide is the God of Jacob he is the God of my sunset. He is the God of my sunset. In Genesis chapter 28 verse 11, Jacob is running for his life. He just grabbed the birthright that was rightfully his because he acquired it through signing a contract. Sealed by a vow. Yet he ran like a fugitive. And he arrived in a certain place. The Bible said the sun set. He couldn't keep running. Not because he didn't have energy. But because the sun set. There are times in life where the sun will set on you. When the sun set of a person. You begin to see blurry. Vision begin to not be clear as it was. You begin to get negative thinking that come in your mind. And you begin to tear yourself down. You believe, you begin to think, I cannot make it. Why this stuff are happening? Things begin to fall one after the other. Challenges rise up from every corner. The earth become bigger than there was at once. Sun has set upon you. It's one trouble after the other. 
It's one problem after the other. You have lost sight of knowing what tomorrow will be for you. That's what sunsets are. And Jacob ran and got in a place and there was a sunset. He slept on the rock. And the Bible said, at night when he slept, he had a dream. And in the dream, he saw heaven. And he saw God sitting on the throne. And the angel was descending and ascending. And God renewed his covenant with him. I'm here to speak to somebody, even one person. You might feel right now that the sun has set on you. Business is not rocking the way you thought it will rock. You might have thought that the sun has set on you because your finances are working a little bit funny. You might have thought the sun has set on you because what you have tried has not worked for you. But let me tell you, the God of Jacob, who is your marvelous helper, he is the God of your sunset. The reason you have a sunset is because he want to give you a dream for insight. Hallelujah, somebody. So welcome the sunset. It might be dark, but it's a divine setup so you can fall asleep to have a dream. Who is going through what? What is not working? Things are falling. Get ready for a Jacob dream. Amen. Get ready for a Jacob dream. Amen. You are qualified for a Jacob dream. In my sunset, the God of Jacob is the God of my sunset. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Then Jacob left from there. He went to Laban, his uncle. He was mistreated. He was cheating on. He was manipulated. He was ripped off. He worked for seven days, they gave him the wrong wife. He worked another seven days, they gave him the right one. And they didn't want to let him leave with his two women. And so he has to work another seven days. That's not fair. I say it's not fair. It's not fair. The God of Jacob, please, my next night. The job of Jacob is the God of the cheated. He is the God of the cheated. Have you ever been cheated on? Have you ever been manipulated? Have you ever been taken advantage of? I'm talking to real human being. Is there anybody here that somebody ripped you off? Is there anybody here somebody promised you something and then turn around and smack you in the head? Is there anybody here he made you work and you didn't get paid for what you deserve to have? Is there anybody lift up your hand? If you've been cheated on, I have a good news for you. The God of Jacob is the God of the cheated. Hallelujah, somebody. Keep cheating me. My God will speak soon. That's what happened with Jacob. Suddenly, the voice came and said, enough is enough. They need to come a time where the God of Jacob, who is the God of the cheaters, will speak on the behalf of the cheater and say, enough is enough. I'm speaking by the voice of God in somebody's situation. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. They have taken advantage of you for too long. 21 years is enough. Five years is enough. Four years is enough. Two years is enough. Enough is enough. The God of Jacob, he the God of the cheated. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who's been cheated? He's your God. You can rest assured. What next is the voice of God? And when God begins to speak for the cheated, he said, boy, enough is enough. You were not born to remain in that condition to be cheated over, Amen. taken advantage of. It's time to move. It is time to move. Amen. It is time to move. Amen. And when God's voice speak on the behalf of the cheated, you know what he did? You don't want to miss this thing. He took all the resources of the cheater and transferred it to the cheated. I'm speaking to somebody. They rip you up your resources, am I right? Don't worry. God is about to do a transfer. He is about to do a transfer. Let everything that has been ripped up, stolen, robbed, manipulated out of your pocket, out of your hand, come back to you in the name of Jesus. I say come back to you in Jesus' name. He transfer all the wealth, all the money, all the resources, all the sheep on the top of that wolf is two women and he left the place. Transfer. The cheater will cheat, but not forever. Because there is a voice of God 
who is the God of righteousness, who is the God of restoration, who is the God of Jacob, but is the God of the cheated. I sat down. I did mathematics. I look at all the years and I feel like somebody owe me something. You know, you feel like you've been cheated on for too long. I, am I speaking to somebody? No, no, I, some of you don't get me. You get ripped off. You work harder. And they promise you this and then after that they're gone. Nivi Nukoni. Heaven is speaking on somebody's behalf. A transfer of resources is coming your way. What they ripped up you from is coming back to you in the name of Jesus. The God of Jacob will marvelously help you because he's the God of the cheated. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. He woke up to destiny. Don't miss this. He woke to the reality of his greatness. I'm speaking to somebody. He awoke to encounter his greatness. The boy, Jacob, did not understand who he is and what he carries. <laughs> when he woke up, purpose began to cry. Ah! Somebody's destiny is crying out of him right now. You begin to realize there is more than this. And there is more to this. You begin to be unsatisfied. You can no longer settle. 21 years. We have to break with the abuse, break away. The God of Jacob is the God who balances the equations. You know, when, when God speaks that to my heart, I feel like this is the story of my life. I will explain. He is the God who balances my equations. Let me explain to you so that you understand what it means that God balances your equation. You remember Leah? Leah was not beautiful. All right? The Bible says, don't look at me like that. And don't even dare to say everybody's beautiful. That's not true. All right? Everybody's amazing. Everybody's phenomenal. Because God did not give anybody everything. So leave it alone. It will be like you saying everybody's tall or everybody's short. Leave it alone. Come on, talk to me. Come on, talk to me. Leah, the Bible says she was not pretty. It is the Bible that says it. Of course, Leah has no relative in this church. <laughs> Woo! Leah's relative is in the other church, not this one. <laughs> and because she was not pretty, her husband did not like her. But the God of Jacob is the God that balances the equation. Ramando Kalamandaya. Leia, you may not have beautiful, but your womb is open. Am I hearing somebody speak to me? Is a God who balances the equation. You may not be good here, but you are good here. You may not have this, but at least you have this. You may not be this tall, but you have a brain. You may not be this strong, but you are smart. Am I speaking to somebody? God is the God who balances my equations. Hallelujah, somebody. God balances my equation. I went to a conference years ago, and they put me on the poster as the main speaker. It was in 2008. Now imagine 2008, I really look young. Bethia, my daughter, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> now imagine 2008. So I went to this conference. I'm supposed to speak on the Saturday. The big deal is there. Friday, I arrived from Calgary. And then I went down. There was another speaker speaking. All right? So I came to see the guest, uh, to see the host, the gentleman who invited us. 
So I came down, it was in the amphitheater, going down like in a movie theater, and I just came and I, I saw the gentleman, so I introduced myself. I said, uh, I am Pastor El Haj, hello. The guy, who? I said, I am, he, he never saw me, he just listened to my teaching and he invited me. <clears throat> so I said, I, I am El Haj, hello. You should see the eyes of this man. He was like, what the heck? You! I felt so little. I sat down and he stood up introducing all the pastors and the bishop from US, US and all this. And then he went well, get on me. He ridiculized me publicly. He goes like that. He told me that he is 40 years, but he looked like 22 years old. Um, he, he was supposed to be preaching Saturday, but Bishop Apostle so so from the state will be preaching. He will just give a testimony publicly, publicly, my friend, publicly, publicly. I said, Lord, I'm that prideful that you're going to humble me that way. And then when I was about to leave, he catched me up and he said, tomorrow I will come and see you at the hotel. I want to talk. We have a conversation. Very diminishing, you know. It's all above my head like that. We have a conversation. I went to the hotel. I called my wife. I, I, I was in all my states, man. I didn't know what to do. Then the next day, I'm sitting down having my little breakfast around 10 no, no, no. I, I, I went to the hotel in the room, and then I went to the other room where the apostle from the United States is staying. One of my friends brought me to go meet her. And I sat down, and this lady literally lit. She goes, when you will be a real pastor, here's what you should do. I, I have a church. I am the senior pastor of my church here. When you will become a pastor, you need to do, I mean, for three hours. She lectured me. And I sit down like that. I'm shaking. I feel like, God, I'm going back to Calgary now. <laughs> At least they, 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 they love me. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I walk out. I went to my bed. The next day, the guy show up. And then he started with his question. And he goes, I want to know, when, when did you start the church? I said, 2005. He said, uh, what degree do you have in theology? How many people go to your church? I stopped. I said, ask me all the questions, then at the end I'll give you the answer. And he lined up the questions. And when he finished, I looked at him straight in the head like this. And I said, you never met me, you invited me. Get out of the flesh, get in the spirit. I have no answer. And I give you two hours. In two hours, you call me to tell me, I'm either preaching, not giving a testimony, or I buy my ticket, I can go back to Calgary now. He said, oh, I said, I'll give you two hours. He left. And then he called me after a few minutes. He said, yeah, yeah, you'll be preaching. I said, good boy, good boy, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> he is the God who balances my equation. Later that day, that evening, I become something else. I didn't recognize myself. The power of God was in this place. People running to repent with that altar call. And it was so amazing that this apostle stood up Wolf is 12 disciples walking behind her. You know the American know how to do this thing. We are just playing around. She walked like that and she came. And I hear somebody behind me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And she want to sing a powerful song and prosa. And then she goes, you guys don't know who this man is. Oh, this man. God will use you. By the time she begins to talk about me and how awesome I am and wonderful I am and great that I am, I run to her and I block the microphone and I whisper in her ear, I say, Mama, go down and sit down. It's not your time. It's my time. Go down and sit down. He's the God who balances the equation. He's the God who balances the equation. Even if that night I was not supposed to be powerful, God has no choice. After they play me down the way they did, God of Jacob, he is marvelously helping me. And it's the God who balances the equation. Hallelujah. Don't fight your battle. When people think they have crushed you down, God will find a way to make you shine. He's the God who's my helper. Malando kopakala matikala. In other words, where you think you're not good, don't worry. He will load you up somewhere else. Where they are mocking you, don't worry. He will honor you somewhere else. He is the God who balances my equations. Am I speaking to somebody today? He is the God who balances your equation. Hallelujah. 
Oh my God. Malakuta malakete. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm speaking to somebody. You know, suddenly your weaknesses don't intimidate you anymore. Because it balances the equations. People can walk here, spit on you, dishonor you, speak bad about you, belittle you. Don't worry. Bless are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. It's a matter of time. God will lift you up and they will see with their own eyes. They will witness the glory and the greatness of God in your life. God will make sure they witness it. Who can die? The God who balances my equation. I'm not scared anymore of my weaknesses. Because they are set up that God uses to bring greater glory. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Tell your neighbor, sorry. He will balance my equation. People talk bad about you, don't worry. He will balance your equation. He will give you an opportunity to shine. He will give you an opportunity to make the difference. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So Rachel may be ugly, but Rachel, has, Leah may be ugly, but Jacob has no choice to love Leah because Leah can give to him what other cannot. Balance my equation, oh God. Somebody say, oh Lord, oh Lord. marvelously help me marvelously. by balancing my equations. Hallelujah, somebody. Your equation shall be balanced. You will no longer be the reproach of anybody. I pray, I say, God, balance my equation. Just like Rachel. She's beautiful but barren. She became the, to be the reproach in the neighborhood. A reproach. People are saying, if your God is God, why is he not doing this for you? You are always bragging about how oh, God is phenomenal and fantastic. Why are you still struggling with this? Why are your son is struggling with that? Why are you barren? Why this? I say, Lord, you are the God of Jacob and the God who balances my equation. God will move and put his finger on the balance and remove your shame. Remove your reproach. He has the last word. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, he's the God who balances my equations. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Laban now pursue this man. He said, I'm taking you down. You run away with my two girls. My possessions were transferred to you. He woke up and he felt like, what just happened? You mean the guy is gone after 21 years and he left me with nothing? How did this happen? That he got all the goods and left. So I'm going to kill him now. And he took his javelin. Running to tear him down. When he lifted up his hand to strike Jacob, God said, hold it. Don't touch him. Hold it, don't touch him. For I am for him. It's written, I am with him. The Hebrew said, I am for him. For him. God is for me. God is for you. Are you hearing me, somebody? There is something here. When God says, I am for him, God is saying, he's my favorite one. I am God's favorite one. You are God's favorite one. Don't let me just enjoy that by myself because you also are God what? Favorite one. The story is given of a man who has a cup, a teacup that he really loves. It was precious. It was sentimentally attached to him. He affectionately loved this cup. And so he will use this cup for special events, for himself alone. And one day he just used the cup and drink and he put it down. To be washed. And uh, one, of his, one of his children took the cup and washed it and put it down on the table. The youngest 
who is called grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Grace, without realizing, pushed the cup. But the dad said, if anybody break this cup, the one who will break this cup, you will see who I'm really, who am I. In other words, the punishment will be beyond recovery. Don't break this cup. So the whole family always walk by the cup like that. Don't touch the cup. Even when you're washing the cup, you're shaking because if this cup break, something will happen. That day, the boy wash it, put it down. And grace came without realizing and push it and bang, the cup broke. All the brothers went and got some steaks because they know dad will, dad will do something here. So we provide him with the punishment tools. <laughs> Somebody will pay for this today. So they put down. And then the dad arrived like that. Everybody is shaking. Grace is standing like that. And the dad goes, what's going on? And all the brothers goes, it's Grace. Who broke it? Have you ever been in a family like that? <laughs> you better say quickly before the dad begin to pick up on somebody to find out who did it. So without it and the dad figuring out, they all go like that. It's her. But God, or the father in this case, was for grace. And the father said, Grace, is it you who broke it? And Grace said, yes, me. And the dad get angry and he said, who put the cup here for Grace to break it? <laughs> Who did that? Who put the cup here? That's what happened when God is for you. Even when you messed up, God will find somebody else and condemn him, not you. Somebody say, I am favored. Who, who, who put the cup here? Who did that? Give me the stick. Who, who did, no, no, who put it here? It's no longer who break it because Grace is favored. Grace, you are favored. Grace, you are favored. Grace, you are favored. Hallelujah, somebody. Jacob was favored. Even when he messed up, God stopped the hand of Laban. He said, don't touch this boy, for I am for him. He is my favored one. Hallelujah. He is the God of Jacob. He is the God who is for me. I want you to know that. Say, God of Jacob is for me. Put, put your hand on yourself like that. He is for me. He is not for us. He is for me. You are the favored one. That's why you've gone through hell and come out. That's why you break his laws and come out. That's why you've sinned and fall back and turn around and run away from you. But for whatever reason, everybody thinks you should discipline this stupid crazy child. You need to smack him. And God said, who make you do that? Who make you do that? Who make you do that? Who made you do that? Who made you do that? Favored one. Washed, covered, justified, embraced. Hallelujah, somebody. I am favored. So are you in Jesus' mighty name. That is the God of Jacob. Is the God who is for me. I'm going to my closing. Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. Thank you, Jesus. What should you say? To this thing. If God is for me, Magalando, who then can be against me? If God is for me, who can be against me? When God is for you, who can stand? Being, you know what I like? He say, who can be against me and there is no name that followed? We are still looking for the who. We haven't found it yet. <laughs> we are still looking for the opposition that will stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Who can stop the move of God in the life of one that God is for him? If God is for you, what can stop your advancement? If God is for you, what can stop your progress? If God is for you, what can stop your elevation? If God is for you, what can stop your celebration? If God is for you, I want to give you permission today to believe. Today, to remove your eyes from the obstacles 
and all the things that you are magnifying, thinking they are big enough to stop you. You need to know you are the favored one of the Lord. And if his God is for you, nothing can stop you. No system can stop you. No human being can stop you. No principality can stop you. God is for me. He's the God of Jacob who is for me. Who can stop me? Who can stop cross point? Who can stop your business? Who can stop your ministry? Who? We are still looking. We are still looking about the who. We haven't found it yet. Hallelujah. God is for me. Who can stop? You know what the message Bible says? In the next one there, Romans chapter 8, 31. In the Bible, in the... the in the message, it said, so what do you think? Common conversation, what do you think? Hey, what do you think? We've got on your side like this. How can we lose? We've got on your side like, like this. Do you see it like this? Like this. If God is on your side, like this. If God has been standing on your side all this time, so you don't lose your mind. How can you lose? How can we lose, friends? If God is on my side like this, how can we lose? I want you to remove your eyes on the losing mentality. Remove your mind on the impossibilities mentality. Because God is available to marvelously help you. I want you to step in the realm of believing. Daring. Stepping out. Running your race with boldness and passion. This is not about somebody. It's you and God. If God is on your side like this, when you didn't deserve for him to be on your side, just because he's for you, he still stood by your side. How can you lose? How can we lose? I want you to leave this service today. Even in your moment of isolation and loneliness. To have the assurance that you are not alone. That God is by your side. You've done nothing. Begin to do something. He is not disappointed. He knows your infirmity and your frailty. God is not shocked when you miss the mark. That's why I said in 1 John 1 9, if anybody missed the mark and repent, God is just to forgive you and to wash you from all unrighteousness. He has made provision for your mistake. He has made provision for your sins. He has made provision for your weaknesses. He has made provision for your setbacks. Because he knows what you're made of. He is the God who said, I will marvelously help you. Let bow our head as we pray. How can we lose? You are the God of my sunsets. Malabosta. Hidden in the darkest moment. Where you think everything is gone. Taken away from you. God is the God of your sunset.
a dream from insight. You will rise again from that sunset on a bright day to continue your journey. It's the God who order your steps. The sunset is not the end. Do not give up on a sunset. Do not give up in a time of struggle. Do not give up in a time of darkness. Do not give up. The God of Jacob is the God of the sunsets of your life. You will surely rise again. You will surely stand again. You will surely recover again. You will surely run again. The God of Jacob is the God of the cheaters. Those who have been cheated on. The God of the cheated. Have you feel like life has been unfair? Circumstances did not work out the way you planned it? Have you felt like you've done so much and just gathered so little? Have you felt like all your projects never come out to be, to be actualized? You feel like you're working harder than you gathered? Have you been betrayed by friendship, by individuals, business partners, taking advantage of without reward? In this commission today, the God of Jacob is the God of the cheated. By divine authority, I command now a time of restoration, a passation of resources unto you. All those things that have been stolen from you, I command a restoration, a restitution, a transfer of resources to put an end to the lack, to put an end to the scarcity of resources. He is the God of the cheated. Father, under this commission, in the name of Jesus, you the God of Jacob, you the one who balanced my equations, remember your people today. Balance every equation of their lives. Put an end to the mockery of the enemy. Put an end to the despising behavior toward them. The dishonoring, the mockeries. Balance my equations. Balance the equation of your children. Rise up on their behalf. Put your finger to the balance. As you remember Rachel, remember them. Open and give them. You will stop the hand of Laban from striking the one that you are for him. Lord, no weapon form against this house. No weapon form against the families of this home. No weapon form against your people shall prosper. Let the voice of God speak on our behalf. Let heaven thunder. Enough. Enough. Enough.
Oh, Lord Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. If you are for me, who can be against me? If you are for these ones that you have predestined, that you have called and justified, those that you have called to be like Jesus, if you are by their side, what can stop their movement? What can stop their progress? What can stop their advancement? The Lord is speaking to your heart today. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Wipe your tears and cheer up. God is for you. God is for you. God is for you. If you're sitting here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, probably you have a form of religion and you love him. But you would like to give your life to him and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. I would like you to lift up your right hand and say, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're here this morning, I want to give my heart, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to give my life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nobody, let's pray and bless you. Stand up on your feet, everybody. Hold somebody's hand together. Father, thank you for your beautiful presence on these great people. Those you predestined, you also called to conform them to the image of Christ. And those that you called, you also justified. So what then should we say of those things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I release them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the peace of God remain upon each person. And let this message become the reality of the day to carry them through their lives without a doubt knowing that you may be the judge of the world but you are our father the loving father the caring father the avenger of his people father let them find moment to celebrate you and to give you thanks in Jesus' name. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord Church? <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I would like you to give a hug to 20 people and tell them, I am being marvelously helped.